Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Tash Teaches. I'm Tash, and today I want to share with you 10 cool little tips and tricks that you can use in Bitwave. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, tip number one is really useful for when you're using a plugin that has its own internal sequencer, and therefore it creates sound without you even having a clip. I've got no clips on the timeline here, no clips in the clip launcher, but when I press play, you can see that these four instances of Superior Drummer which I've got the Latin percussion, Latin Cuban percussion pack. Um, they're, they're just playing on their own. And I could just let this go forever. Or I could uh, drag out the actual MIDI clip onto the timeline. But those of you that know me will understand that I like to do everything in audio as soon as possible. And a quick and easy way of doing this without having to make an audio channel and set the input, blah, 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 is if you just make a clip, as long as you want the clip to be, these are just empty clips. You can see empty MIDI clips, nothing on them. If I then highlight these and press Command-B to bounce in place, you can see that I've now got straight away those pieces in audio. And uh, when you want to save RAM, what you can do with these kind of plugins is then just deactivate them. So they're not using any of your CPU or RAM. And that means that I now have the audio. But if I did need to then go back and change the conga, all I have to do is just put this back on again and voila and this works as well with uh clips in this view if i were to set um a length of saying i want uh, four bars and this one i want to be two bars and vice versa all i have to do is just bounce them and you'll see that i've got here a four bar clip although it's duplicated it for me and i've got a two which is now a four bar clip okay tip number two deals with the deleting time copying time pasting time inserting time features of bitwig for any of you like me that came from Ableton, you're used to being able to just highlight a selection of time and pressing Command Shift D to add it or, you know, to delete time or then the command, I think I've got it as Command Shift I here, but in Ableton it's Command I. But the problem with that in Bitwig is you have to highlight all of the tracks that you want to do that on and then the rest don't move. Also, it can be quite frustrating as well where, say, if you have a Q marker here, um, we'll say that that is verse... And then we had a cue marker there that says chorus. Uh, you'll notice that even if, if if I highlight a section of time and I do uh, command shift D to duplicate time, it's not moving it. But if I highlight all of the time, all of the clips, then it does work. But the cue marker doesn't move. And the other annoying thing is if I wanted to then insert time, command shift I, again, the cue markers don't move. And the key to this, which is actually a lot less fi uh, finicky and fiddly than I was doing when I had to highlight all this, is if you select a time in the t in the ruler at the top, it will work. So if I click in the ruler and drag from verse to chorus and I press Command Shift D, it will move it. And in the same way as if I wanted to add in a little section of silence here, if I select in, in the ruler and press Command Shift I, now I can move it. And this works from before the point. And yeah, that's a handy little way of being able to move, delete, copy, insert, time, yada, 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 yada. Those of you that watched my video on multi-outputs for EXO and Atlas will remember that it was a bit of a pain for me to have to set up the multiple outs. So I've got this, uh, I, I went into EXO and I set the multiple outputs and that gives me the ability to then use this multi-out feature here. But in order to get all of those onto individual audio channels, um, rather than just having, um, you know, them all coming through on one, I had to create an audio channel and select XO and then the chains and then the first one, effects, and I called that effects and then I did another one and we did XO and then we did chains and then I did kick and then that allowed me that when I recorded, I could record out the audio when XO decides to play. God knows, but oh, there we go. So you can see that now it's recording out. But that's a huge effort to have to go through every time and set that up. So what you can do is save a preset of XO with the multi-output. But what you can't do is save this setup. You can't save a preset of a bunch of tracks. But what you can do is you can save a template. So if I were to go through and I were to make another channel here and I'd call this uh, XO and then we go chains and we'll go for snare. And if I delete these and you set XO to how you would want it to be when you first load it up. So in my case, I like to have this as 
initialized. And I go through and I would personally go through and I would color coordinate these and I would say kick two because we go through all of them, kick one. And then that one would be XO kick two, yada, yada, yada. I put the effects at the end. Um, I would make this gray just so I know that that's the actual uh, plugin rather than the audio file. And these are now hardwired to record out the audio of XO. And then all you have to do is just delete any extra bells and whistles you have in the project file. So the only thing in the project file, you don't want any clips, nothing, just an empty dry bus. When you press play, there's nothing on there. If you then go up to file and you save as template, you could call this XO multi out drums and then save it and it will come up as templates. And then I've already gone ahead and done that. If you go to the browser files up here under my library, you'll have templates and you can just drag in the project of your saved XO um, exo multi out audio file and it will come in in a group but when you open that up or i usually just as soon as i drag it in i press command shift g and that will ungroup it and now when i open it up i have this already which means that if i then loaded up a pattern in here and have let's go for the ausfahrt köln i now have the audio playing and if i were to just highlight all of these and turn them on you can see that when i start to record Lovely. And then I would usually, once I've got my pattern, just delete XO and et voila, I've got very quickly all of the sounds on individual channels. And of course, any ones which don't have anything on, you could just delete. But that makes it incredibly handy. And you could do this with anything. You could set up a superior drummer thing where the kick and the snare are all on separate outputs. Or maybe you've even got uh, subtle effects on them already. If you knew that you wanted to have like a saturator on the kick, you could leave it on there. And that means when you drag the template in, everything is ready for you. I mean, the sky's the limit when you come up with template ideas. It's not just for project files. It can be for uh, processes that you do all the time and are just a huge hassle to set up. Now, a lot of you that have watched my videos have been at times exasperated by my inability to remember when I'm recording that when you press solo, there's a quicker way of turning them off rather than just having to go through and manually do that. That is, of course, you know, if you have a few selected, as I've been repeatedly told, if you press shift and click, it will turn them all off. But coming from Ableton, that seems a bit counterintuitive. And even though I've been using Bitwig like nonstop for a few months now, um, I, I just don't like that feature. I think it's a bit frustrating and I would rather click this solo and that not do it as well. I'd rather to do group soloing, press shift to click it and turn it on. And there is a way that you can change that. So currently, of course, if I had something soloed and I wanted to now unsolo a bunch of them, you could press shift. But if you go into the settings here under behavior, under solo, there is exclusive solo. If you turn that on, you are now in the realm of Ableton, where if you're listening to something and you press solo, now solo will work in the way that you think it would. And if I want to solo a few things, you shift click them. And when you click one, they all go off. I think that's a bit more logical if you are coming from Ableton and if you're, if you're fresh to it. Okay, this next tip deals with uh, effect returns. We know that we can add effect returns by pressing uh, command option T and we can have them here and say I had a reverb. This gives me the option to then send any of these channels or groups to the reverb. And there's this nice little fader section down here where I could send the strings and the drums to it. But what's quite cool as well is if you have quite a high track count and uh, you don't necessarily want to have the, you don't, you know that you won't want to send the keys to the same reverb as you're sending the drums, you can create effect returns, but these returns can be moved into groups. So if I now drag this into the drum group, we now have just a drum reverb. And when you go onto the reverb here, you'll see that the only things that you can send to it are in the drum group. And uh, you can see as well here that it's a bit of a mess, sorry, but you can see that now if I want to send this kick to this reverb, this drum reverb is only available on the drum channels. It's not on the bass. And that's quite handy for when you want to keep effects separate. You know, you don't want, you want to create a bit of a room on the drums. You can send all of them however much you want. And uh, that's quite handy. And you, again, you can create as many as you want. And depending on where you are in the project file, if you if you click inside a group and keep adding them, you will be adding only effects to within that group.
OK, the next tip involves the colouring of notes in clips. By default, the notes in a clip will just be varying shades of the colour of that clip itself. So you can see here that this is some sort of like salmon. But if I change the clip to being green, they're varying shades of green. Um, this is a purely taste-based uh, tip. If you want to have uh, something different, what you can do is you can right-click in the clip and you have here note colours. If you pick note channel, that will be dependent on which channel the note is sent to. If you right click the note, or sorry, if you click on the note, you could change the the channel it's being sent out on. This is useful if you're doing sort of a multi MIDI out stuff. Um, but you can also change it to pitch class, which will change the note depending on it will change the color depending on the note. So you can see here that if I add another G down there, it will be red. If you're quite a colorful person and you respond well to um, colors and you see notes as colours, this can be quite handy. And it looks particularly nice when you see notes going up. And what's quite cool as well is colours will be similar to based off of their harmonic relationship. So if I were to add a C here, you can see that that's a pink. And if I add a G, we're on a yellow. But if I then, sorry, if I add an E, we're on a yellow. But if I add a G, you can see that that's similar to the C. Uh, I think it's relate relative to the fifth. So if I had an E and I did an E G B, the B will be similar to the E. This is quite nice for all of you synesthesiacs out there. And the last option is velocity. And what that will do is the colors change depending on how hard the notes are. So if I change the velocity of this, it goes from being gray through all of the colors to then being red. That's quite nice as well. OK, this next tip uses the post recording actions function, which is quite handy where you can see here that my uh, my loop is eight bars long. And say I have a vocal idea that is eight bars long and I want to sing it through a bunch of times or I'm recording a guitar line or a synth or it doesn't have to be audio. It could be MIDI as well. But sometimes if you are doing something a few times, you don't want to have to cut it afterwards. You want to be able to just go, OK, take one, take two, take three, take four. And you can record in uh, to the session view here, into the clip launcher, and have it automatically record a new clip after eight bars. If I were to start recording now. Hello, this is me. This is me singing my song. And I'm going to sing for about eight bars. But once we start to get to the eight bar line, OK, yeah, yeah, yeah. Should have really done four bars here. But la, 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 la. So the annoying thing is there, I would have to go through, if I recorded like 200 bars of music, I'd have to go through and cut them. But what I can do is if I go up here to the play function, I can go down to post recording action delay. And I could change where it says off here to record into next free slot and then change the time to eight bars. And for the sake of this demonstration, I'm just going to do four bars for now. And this will basically record four bars into the next clip, into the next clip, and it will do it for as many scenes as you have. So if you want more, you can just do more scenes. But here we go once again. Let's try another four bars. And way, let's do it again. Oh, yeah. Next clip. Wonderful. And you can see that that basically allows you to have take one take two. And once you start really compiling these up, especially if you're recording with a singer, it's nice for them, especially if they know that they're singing in an eight bar loop, it's very nice for them to be able to go, that was the one I liked, or it's a lot easier to remember where you are. And of course, this gets even handier when you start to click on both of them, then you can start to do comps. So if I had a bunch of these, you know, I had, sorry, I had a, a bunch of different takes, I can click on shift click on all of them. And then I can basically, oh, Let's click all of them. I can basically have them all open and we could say, oh, well, we like that bit. We can move that up to the top layer. We like that bit, move that up to the top layer. And that's just a great way of getting around the issue of not really having an inbuilt comping feature. But if you're just playing the top layer, you can play through and you can make the edits on the fly and you can create uh, the clip that you want. Um, absolutely brilliant. This, of course, works with um, doing on MIDI as well. So if you had a, a polysynth or something and you're just playing around with some ideas. And it's created the next clip. 
Uh, incredibly handy. Of course, you can then turn that off if you don't want to use it by just going back to record into next free clip off. This next tip is sort of a follow on from the previous idea where specifically with recording vocals, oftentimes you don't want to just record a totally dry, unaffected vocal. You, you want to have at least some minor processing while it's going in. So if I was recording into this project file, I would want that when I choose to play back the, the things that I've recorded, that I can listen to it and it's already got some light compression, maybe some light auto-tune on it. So what I would do is I would set up a vocal bus, and I, I would call it a vocal bus, and we're not going to be recording onto this channel at all. So then we're going to add maybe a CLA-2A, and I know that I like to use, I don't know why I use the mono one, doesn't really matter. Um, but I would put the CLA-2A and I would put the vocal, and this is nice because it gives me about 3 dBs of gain reduction. Um, and then maybe I put the Waves Tune Real Time that I really like as well. And I know that this song is E minor, E harmonic minor. And I, I like to leave the settings exactly as they are on the real time. Uh, 15 milliseconds and 120 seems to do just fine for not really changing anything, but just subtly uh, hugging the pitch. And again, maybe you put some sort of like uh, EQ on it and blah, blah, blah. Let's, let's just see if there's anything in here. We'll go for voice, uh, lead vox or whatever. Um, so maybe, you know, we've done that now. Um, and it's up to you to choose your order. But what's handy now is if I were to record an audio clip onto this channel, it's not actually um, it's not actually recording the clip with that affected sound. So I would need to then go through and bounce it afterwards. Or if I then want to do another channel, you know, I start to then incur quite a lot of plugins in my project file. So what I like to do is I have this vocal bus. I usually like to capitalize it just so I know that it's not that. And then I'll go to another audio channel and I'll call it lead vocal because I know that all of this is going to stay the same every time I record something. This is just like, it's like having an external rack. So on my lead vocal, I then set the input to be vocal bus, and we go post. And then I record into here. So if I now put my uh, post recording action, we do next slot, and let's make it two bars. Uh, when I start to record here, and that's really handy because if I then want to do some backing vocals, I can just do another channel called backing vocals and I can record, but of course it's still coming through here. So I'm getting that um, basic effect on whatever I'm recording. And you can see here that now this has got some light. Lovely. I mean, we're not going to be winning any awards with that vocal, but this is a great way to keep your plugin count low and to apply a sort of uniform sound to your vocals. If you come up with a specific vocal bus that you like, you could then just create um, a template, you know, call it, uh, you know, save that as vocal vocal bus. And then anytime you want to record, you just bring up your vocal bus, blah, 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 and put it on a new audio channel. And again, in the previous tip, I showed you how you could use a template. You could set up a template with then lead vocal and backing vocals, and then you can have the kind of effects you don't want to glue to it, like reverb, on those channels you're recording to. Tip deals with the punch in, punch out feature that, again, is a little different than what you may be used to with Ableton. And I think it works really quite well. Um, Basically, what punch in, punch out means is you can set a time frame of which you would like to record and then not record before or after that, or just record uh, from a point or stop recording at a point. And what you do is, if I, even if I have this loop turned off now, if I were to highlight a, a selection of time and I, you know, I loop it, but then I turn off my loop, this brace will determine where the punch in and punch out um, starts and stops. So if I turn on punch in and punch out, and I have uh, this channel record enabled, uh, let's solo it with the drums, you'll see that as I play, oh, nothing is going to record until we get to that point, and then it will stop recording. And that can be quite handy if you've made like a small mistake um, I don't know why that sound isn't playing. Um, but that might be quite handy if you've made a small mistake, or say, for example, you've done everything perfectly up to a certain point, 
and you just want to start recording there, if you set your marker there and turn this off, as you play through, everything will be fine until that point. And then it will start recording. Or you might want to not record past that point, and you know that you like that bit there. So what you can do is you can turn punch out off, and then you can start recording. And now we're doing a wonderful job. We're recording our new part. And as soon as we get to this point, it's going to stop recording. So this works well if you're recording audio as well. You know, maybe you're playing a guitar and you can't quite quickly get to the keyboard to, to turn the recording on and off. This works with MIDI and audio. The final tip is the less glamorous of all of them, but is still really useful. If you're like me, sometimes I, I come up with chords um, almost uh, away from the computer, and I write them down because I've come up with them on the piano or the guitar, or I've researched some sort of traditional chord progression of uh, a specific type of music, and uh, and I can very easily lose track of them. You can see here that on the strings I've actually written it into the clip name, so I know that this is E minor, and then a D, and then a C, and then a B7. But sometimes it's very easy to, to lose track of all of these pieces of information and then you maybe have a notes thing and then that's keeping uh, information there. But it's quite nice to keep everything in the project file so you don't lose it. And the way that you can do that is if you go down here to the project panel, you can basically write in whatever you want. You can put as many notes as you want in here and uh, you could have different sections where you say like... Um, things to do. So you have your to-do list in the project file. Um, to do, and then you say uh, mix vocals, um, fix drums, blah, 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 blah. And then maybe you put in some like ideas, references, and you can keep all of the information here. You can write down your chord progressions, you can write lyrics into here, and everything is then kept within the project file, which is really handy. You can just hide that and show it when you need to. Well, that's about all we have time for today, folks. But I do hope that this video has been useful. If you enjoyed these tips, then please remember to like and subscribe and turn on those notifications to keep up to date with all the newest videos. And if you wish to take your support one step further, then consider becoming a patron too. Best wishes to you, and as always, happy Tuesday and happy creating.